So now I'm going to address the people of the city of Philadelphia. Hi, guys. You guys haven't had a rough go. Uh, and the Arizona Diamondbacks were a big part of that. Um, but I get it. Uh, I know. We, we are, we are uh, Arizona sports fans. So we have been going through pain and misery our entire lives, practically. Uh, but I did want to cover that the Diamondbacks did help contribute to the most heartbreaking year in Philadelphia sports. Uh, and it gives me life, Jesse. It really does give me life. The 76ers, just to remind you, blew a 3-2 series lead to the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference semifinals. That then would have you, been like in, in like May or June, correct. something like that. Uh, yeah. Then fast forward to this past uh, September, October time, uh, actually October, when the Phillies blew a 3-2 series lead to the Arizona Diamondbacks in the National League Championship Series. Philly sports fans are passionate, man. When, yeah. I, was, when I was there covering that series, it it's, it's insane. It, it's another level. I, so, I, I, well, I, you chose a very good word in passionate. I, I, I respect the passion that Philly's fans bring uh, to the ballpark on, on a daily basis, especially in the postseason. But there was a there was a, a kind of an uncomfortable feeling in that ballpark in game six and seven when when the series came back to Philly. Uh it, it, there was just like this, this like nervous tension yeah. in the air. Panic. I guess is how I would describe Panic. it. Where, yeah, Phillies fans in games one and two. It, I mean, it was loud throughout, but it was louder in games one and two because uh, the Phillies came out and they were hitting homers and they were doing oh, yeah. crazy just things right away. They, were, they yeah. were dominating the Diamondbacks. The place was going was going berserk. But even I mean, in that game seven, you know, winner winner take all, going to the World Series. There was uh, Phillies fans were were uncomfortable going into They've that game. They've been there. They've seen it before. They've <laughs> had it happen to their teams. We would be in the exact same position. We've seen it happen to us. We know it can happen. We've seen it with the Suns. We've seen it with our teams that we thought were going to be uh, dominant and we're going to go on to win the series. And then somebody just completely smacks you in the face all of a sudden out of nowhere, even when you have a series lead, right? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I can kind of understand that. I felt like that pressure was the pressure the Diamondbacks put on everybody in the postseason because everybody else was expected to win. And the yes. Diamondbacks were just the team that eked their way in. So the Diamondbacks didn't have that pressure to win because if they lost, they would be losing to the Brewers, which won their division. They would be losing to the Dodgers, which obviously are they the would Dodgers. Be losing, you know, <laughs> they, they would be losing to these teams that everybody would like say logically that makes sense that they lost to them. Right. But there, so that made it easy for the Diamondbacks not to really have the pressure on them. Sure. Maybe in some yeah. moments, like you said, after, after games one and two in Philadelphia, you do feel that pressure a bit. You do feel a little differently about coming out and giving those, all those home runs hit against you. But uh, it still felt like the Diamondbacks never really had much to worry about. No matter what, they were going to kind of be applauded and cheered for how far they had made it, especially making out of the wild card round, right? So yeah. it was it was a win from that point going forward. Meanwhile, the Eagles, they were 10-1. and one. And Jesse, I was watching this game where the Eagles had a very bad first half after being 10-1. and one. And they went into to the locker room at halftime and their fans booed them. And I mean booed them hard. They booed them like they like 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 the betrayal was real. And being a Cardinals fan, I found that to be hilarious. Your team is <laughs> ten and one. The game isn't even over yet. They're just going into the locker room to you know try to try to figure things out and and you know get themselves back together. And instead, they're getting booed by their home fans after they walk walk off the field. Now. I respect that because Philadelphia fans are just a different breed, really, yeah, when it comes yeah. to it, right? Passionate, I do respect yes. again that word passionate. It's very safe, and I appreciate it. I like <laughs> it. Uh, but I will say that there's something to be said about like demanding that much of your team that at 10 and 1, you're booing them. Yet, I want to say, yeah, it was the Niners game, piece of Yoshi. I think that was what it was. You're right. Yeah, it was the Niners game. But what I do want to say is, were they were they overreacting? Or did they just know? They knew. They knew watching that team against the Niners that their 10-1 team was a fraud. And they wanted them to know that they knew. They weren't saying boo. They were saying frauds is what they were saying. Maybe. I don't know. I'm putting that out there, but uh, I don't know. Philadelphia fans. I got to give them credit. They know their sports. They know their shit. And uh, they are miserable right now. Understandably so.